A vacuum creates a pressure difference that sucks things up. We decided to analyze the pressure difference induced by the impeller, a turbo machine central to the vacuum function. How do you feel about this, David? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Here we have drawn our diagram for the vacuum pump impeller. Um, here we have our rotor blades as well as the volume casing. Um, we can sort of define a streamline that goes from outside of the impeller in through the eye and then around through the flow and up and out, and which goes up into the vacuum bag of our vacuum. Um, at each position, we can say that at state one, we have velocity is zero because it's far away and the pressure is ambient. As we enter through the eye of the impeller, we measure with the anemometer 45 meters per second uh, fluid flow, but we don't know the pressure here. Um, at state three, which we actually derive based on state four, and at state four we measure the fluid flow again with the anemometer to be 54 meters per second, and intuitively we know that pressure here is ambient. Um, so we can work our way backwards to three, which is also just inside of the impeller. Um, and so since there's no change from here to here, it must be 54 meters per second, and pressure is still pressure ambient. Um, and so in order to find our change in pressure from entering to exiting, uh, we need to solve for this value P here, which I do over here. Um, and so I do that by saying, Bernoulli 1 equals Bernoulli 2. Um, so pressure 1 plus 1 half rho v squared uh, equals pressure 2 plus 1 half rho v squared again. Um, at 1, pressure 1 is ambient and the velocity is 0. And at 2, we have pressure 2, which is our unknown, and 45 meters per second. Um, and so we can take that and solve for pressure 2 in order to get 1,0,0,0,8,4 pascals and 1,024.3 is our delta P from 2 to 3, uh, which we got by just subtracting the P ambient from our P, which we have here. Our Bernoulli analysis can be validated by looking at our Reynolds number in the system. So all that is is the equation over there. Um, rho is a known quantity because of incompressible flow, uh, our Mach number is less than 0.3. D, the characteristic length, is just an inner diameter of the inlet. The U is the 45 meters per second that we measured. And mu is the viscosity of air, which is also known quantity. Plugging all that into our Reynolds number equation, we get 170,000, which is a very large Reynolds number, and it indicates that the flow does not have any viscous losses. So we can safely ignore that in our Bernoulli analysis. All right. So we can verify our calculations from Bernoulli just based off of the model of the impeller and doing an efficiency calculation, or rough efficiency calculation, this is obviously not too accurate, but from the model of the impeller, uh, we found that it takes about eight amps, and the outlet, typical outlet, uh, provides 120 volts. So from those two values, we can calculate a uh, P-break, which we're gonna get as 960 joules per second. We can also find the flow rate just based off the geometry of the inlet and the fact that we measured the velocity there. So the velocity of the inlet is 45 meters per second and we calculate the area to be this. So flow rate is just area times velocity right here. So that's that number. And we also found from Google that a typical vacuum impeller has an efficiency of about 15%. So that's the last piece of the puzzle we need there for this equation, which has delta P in it. And that's the only unknown now. So we solve for it and we get 1,720 pascals, which is about in line with our uh, analysis using Google. All right, so to compare a pump with other pumps, uh, we can calculate the specific speed and diameters. This way you can classify a pump and see whether it's an axial flow rate pump or a radial uh, pressure pump. So just using the formulas for the long dimensional on our specific speed and diameters, we get that the specific uh, speed of our pump is 124.69, and our specific diameter is 1.715. Uh, with these two values, we can then place our pump on the specific speed versus specific diameter graph. And because our specific speed is so high, on the actual chart, our pump will go somewhere around right here, which suggests that our pump, despite it being a radial pump, is actually in fact a pump designed for high flow rates.